Hello and welcome everybody, I'm Wolfpop Bavarian and this is Crusader Kings 2 and I'm back with yet another achievement guide. This time around it is Leg Check and Rus. And if you know what Leg Check and Rus is, then you should be excited right about now, much just as I am excited for this video, because that is one of those achievements that takes people two generations, maybe five, you know? Like, it's, it's a huge time span that you spend in the game just to get this achievement done. Now with this guide, no longer will this be the case. With this guide, you will be able to achieve this in just five years of in-game time, and uh, I did it in 7 in this video because I struggled a bit at the midpoint, but don't sweat it. It is easily doable, there's barely any RNG, if at all, and it will hopefully help in making this achievement no longer one of the rarest ones. Lek, Chek and Rus unite the kingdoms of the three brothers, Lek, Chek and Rus, into one Slavic union. 0.9% of players have it. Now this video is the first one of an official, you know, kind of series where I want to make videos about all of the achievements that are below 1% of players having it. What I want to achieve is, I want to have at least 1% of players owning every single achievement so that nothing is truly rare anymore. Yes, that's right, we're going for all those achievement hunters that think they have something special when they have all of these rare ones. No longer will that be the case. Now, let's jump straight into the video. If you want to take on an achievement like the Lek, Check and Rus achievement in as little time as possible, you need to make sure that you are in the perfect starting position. And I have determined that starting position, so please follow me in selecting good old Kagan Batu of the Golden Horde in 1241. 1241 here is a predefined uh, starting scenario, so you don't need to do much. Just select, you know, Rise of the Hansa and then play Kagan Batu of the Golden Horde. He gets 100,000 maintenance-free event spawn troops. It is outrageously powerful. Now beyond that, what you want to do is turn defensive pacts off. You can still win even with defensive pacts on, but it would be incredibly annoying, so don't do it to yourself. It, it's just a pain in the ass. Instead, just turn defensive pacts off. What we need to do in this playthrough to actually achieve Lek, Czech and Rus is to conquer Vladimir, Novgorod, the Kievan Rus, Chernigov, um, Galicia, Volynia, uh, Poland and Bohemia. That's all of the kingdoms and that's plenty of them, alright? So the start here is fairly simple. You just take all of your troops, leave the Horde troops where they are, those are the, the 1k in your capital. And you take all of your event spawn troops and move them west, because our offensive is going to be exclusively in the west of the map, of course, because we want to conquer all of, you know, the things that are to the left of us. Now, the second thing that you will do is go to the religious map and build a temple respectively in Crimea and Etil. If you do that, you will be able to uh, later very easily reform the Tengu religion, which we need to do if you want to go through with this. I also selected the family focus, it does not actually matter. Um, because of the little time that we spent in game, I just selected it to be sure that I wouldn't die until I achieved the achievement, obviously. Um, then you go on and worship the ancestors, because worshipping the ancestors will give you piety. Um, you can select to sacrifice one of your own body parts for 100 piety. You can also just, you know, sacrifice somebody in your prison. I did the body part here. It's a bit risky, I guess, because you get severely injured, but it usually doesn't kill you. Uh, with that piety, of course, we are, you know, accumulating this, because with the piety we'll be able to actually reform the faith if we have 750 of it. Once you've taken care of the issue of piety, just, you know, skip through all the events. The game will be very slow for the first month because the AI will give out a lot of uh, uh, provinces and so on and so forth. Don't worry about it. If you get a rebellion like myself, just hire some mercs. You don't actually want to go on and do it with your 100k. And then go to war. Go to war against Pajaslavl and uh, take one of their provinces. In this case, uh, you're going to take Priluk. Priluk is a good province because it actually has three castles. So the top holding and then the rest of it. If you go to war for Priluk, you will get every single holding in, uh, in it. If you go for a conquest war, you also will actually get piety because winning a conquest war gives you piety, which, you know, is kind of beneficial for all of us here. Uh, the war, of course, not really troubling, seeing as you have a couple more troops. What you want to do right after, and this is important, the... There are three kingdoms or, you know, petty kingdoms around you that have a claimant that is at the game start inside of your realm. Those are Galich Volinia, Novgorod and Smolensk. If you give all of the claimants, and you can see them if you just go into the declare war screen and then, you know, take a look at whoever has a claim on it. If you give all of them one of the baronies that you just conquered, you will be able to push all of their claims immediately. Meaning Galich Volinia, Smolensk and Novgorod will immediately and permanently be under your complete control. Which is exactly what you need to do if you want to do this achievement as quick as possible. Now you can see here, I'm just going along, you know, I gave all of them the baronies uh, that we just conquered. And then I pressed their claims for all three of the kingdoms. I think Novgorod I did actually in a separate war. You can do them all at the same time. Nobody can oppose you. They, they are absolutely hammered. Now what is also important, I just want to point that out, 
whenever you take a holding, be it in a siege or be it in plundering, you will get an event, usually because you're a hoarder, I mean not whenever, but like oftentimes, you will get an event asking you, do you want to plunder this for tech points or do you want to take the prestige? Always take the prestige, okay? You get 50, uh, 50 prestige every time that happens and it is hugely beneficial. Uh, it, it just, you know, will help you so much when it comes to the topic of actually having enough prestige to do everything that will be necessary. And as you can see here, we're taking Novgorod over as we have taken over the rest of them. And with Novgorod fallen, we have so little to worry about anymore. Alright, here we go. Take a look at this. Absolutely beautiful. Now, what will be important next is that you have once in your lifetime a subjugation CB because you are a Tengri horse lord. And we will use this subjugation CB on the Holy Roman Empire because you may have noticed we need Bohemia inside of our realm if we actually want to go through with Lech, Czech and Rus and Bohemia is part of the Holy Roman Empire and you know what if we can't make Bohemia split from the Holy Roman Empire we're just gonna take the entire Holy Roman Empire itself so what I'm doing right here is I'm just absolutely destroying them the Holy Roman Empire I think he if he gets lucky he has like 40k troops he will not be able to oppose you there is a 0% chance of him opposing you successfully if you just keep your armies together even if you don't if you lose it I mean that would be very surprising to me while you do all of this you should be amassing piety you should be amassing prestige all of that will happen naturally you don't actually have to do anything you know you don't have to try hard in any way whatsoever there you go look at this absolute beauty now you could say hey but won't all these vessels rebel against me the answer is they would like to <laughs> <laughs> they're quite weak now as you can see I have the piety necessary to reform but not the religious moral authority meaning what I will do now is I will just go around and plunder because plundering any church means that you get an additional 1% in moral authority you want to reach 50 uh, I was at 46 it was very very close if you're lower just you know it just takes more plundering I guess but either way you will be in a position of easily reforming Tengriism um, it should pop up in just a second, and indeed it will right here, after I plundered everything, there you go. The only thing that matters here, or the only two things I should say, is temporal leadership. You want to be the leader of the church, and then take eternal riders. Mostly, it's not that important, but mostly, because that makes it so. That you will ignore defensive attritions of other pagans that are unreformed, for example the Romuva pagans. And if you do this, that means that you can, you know, invade their lands without having to micro anything. You don't have to split any armies, you don't have to worry about anything whatsoever when it comes to losing troops. The rest is completely irrelevant as long as you can do holy wars. That is important. As long as you can do great holy wars, whatever else you choose for the reformation is entirely irrelevant. Just temporal and eternal riders. It will become relevant in a second. Mostly because, you know, it takes, a, I think, like a year or so. That's the meantime to happen for the great holy wars event actually triggering. And only after that will you be able to call a great holy war. Until then, just go around, you know, holy war your neighbors take them out wherever they are. Uh, it's a bit of an issue. This is what, you know, made this video a bit longer than it needed to be because many people here hold land in territory that is multiple duchies of which you need both of them. So that would be multiple wars. Uh, try to always go for the bigger ones. Try to always, you know, go if you can for the entire duchy. But even if you can't, it honestly is not that significant. You will be perfectly fine. And there you go. That is the event that spawns the Great Holy Wars. Once that event is there, you know that you are ready to go to the proper next step. Now what I'm doing here is I'm just checking, and this is why I said it took me a bit longer because I wasn't sure what to do. I'm just checking. My biggest headache, believe it or not, was Lithuania in this playthrough because Lithuania is in a position where they hold three provinces that are in three different duchies, but you need all three of them. Um, you can truce break. I was a bit too scaredy cat, I guess, to actually truce break here because the prestige cost and the cost in general opinion but I'll be honest with you, just truce break, because you will get an infinite amount of prestige either way, and nobody's gonna rebel against you. The only thing that you need to worry about is, I guess, get a spy master that really, really likes you. Now you can see I just tr uh, broke the truce right there to take the stuff that this character, the Paya Slavl character, holds in the northeast in Vladimir. Um, he holds that at the start of the game, so you definitely need to make sure to take that eventually. But either way, as I said, you just take the prestige option whenever you siege something, any, uh, anything anyway. So you should be in a position of having prestige uh, prestige out of your butt. Meaning that truce breaking, not that significant. It, I, you know, was a bit more afraid than I should have been. But you can see that I've done it and I think I've done it again a uh, couple of times actually here. The thing that, ma and there you go, this is the overview that I wanted to show you. It's, it's Lithuania holds uh, two provinces that are in the Kievan Rus and one in Poland that all three you need. It, it is a tiring situation there but let me tell you it's just truce breaking I actually got lucky and this is a bit spoilers I guess I got lucky I just got a claim in for all of Lithuania and then I was able to incorporate it in just one war after uh, I had to truce break for that war actually
Now the next step, and you can do that early, you can do that later, it does not matter, go for a great holy war against Poland. Because <laughs> it's it's hilarious to me that you take the HRE without any land connection before you go to war for Poland, but definitely go for the uh, subjugation first, and then go for Poland, because Poland will give you so much territory that you can use to become the culture required to become, you know, the person that is uh, the Lech, Czech, and Rus achievement holder. Now what is important to point out here is, whenever you get some of these, you know, one of these... Uh, big province rushes that you do here, you will be tasked to give out like one, just a tiny amount of your land. Never give out, and I'm serious here, to your clan chiefs, never give out any land that is inside of the territory that you need for Lech, Czech and Rus. Never do it, okay? Keep it all. You don't get any penalties, there's nothing bad there. Just keep the land. If they are like, hey, we need, you know, you just conquered all of Poland, please give us one province. Just give them anything in the steps. Whatever it is, it does not matter, just give them anything, okay? Um, if you do that, you will be guaranteed to later on have all the land, truly all the land that you need to do like check and risk. If you don't do that, then once you settle, which you will have to do, you will be in a situation where one of your vassals that was a horde or is a horde may become independent and may hold on to some land that you need. Now, as you can see, I'm attacking Lithuania right now uh, in a war for just, you know, one county. It's, it's a bit of a... Again, tiresome thing. I got lucky later on, but if you just truce break more and, you know, are more willing to truce break than I was, then I think you should be good to go within maybe like two years. Maybe even, honestly, maybe you can do this achievement in four years, right? Maybe you can do that. The minimum is definitely like two or three years because you need to be able to actually build the churches. Those take two years until you can reform the religion. But I think you can do it in maybe four years. Um. Anyway. What you can see here is I just plundered a bit, you know, I just wanted a bit more prestige. Uh, there are other ways to get prestige as well. You could, for example, hold some uh, festivals. You could go on and actually uh, create some titles, which then in turn will give you more passive pr uh, prestige as well because you're holding more titles. All of those things are possible, but not actually necessary. As you can see here, we're in 1247 right now and uh, started the game in, I want to say, 1241, meaning that we would be looking at currently six years. One more year to go, and look at this huge Juan, uh, Juan, I don't even know, Yuan, I don't know how you pronounce it, but look at this huge letter, Jesus Christ, this Y. Uh, quite scary, but, you know, honestly, ignore that you are a tributary, uh, tributary to the Chinese state, you know, don't worry about it. And there you go, I can now claim Lithuania. So all I would, uh, was going to do now is I, I just bought off my council, I had a claimant in Lithuania, I don't actually know where he came from, but he just was there and I was going to take it, right? So I just, you know, talked to my council and uh, made them believe that what I'm doing is the right thing, and all of a sudden they all agreed, there you go. Uh, honestly, despite truce breaking and whatnot, the people in my council never disliked me in this playthrough, making it way easier. Make sure, by the way, that your spy master is unlanded. If they're landed, no matter how content they are, they may rebel against you at some point. They may try to kill you, is what I'm trying to say there. And there you go, we just conquered Lithuania, we only need Peyaslavl. Once you have that taken out, you are literally good to go in just seven damn years. And again, it can be done quicker, it can be done quicker, I'm absolutely sure of it. Because you may have noticed here that I wasted some time as well, but hey, don't let, you, uh, don't let it get you down because that's just how it goes. Again, don't hand anything out that is inside of Russia or inside of the Lech, Czech and Rus kingdoms to any of your horde vassals. It, it would be disastrous. Now what I did here, and you can do this earlier as well, I created all of these duchies and kingdoms so that I would get more prestige. Before you settle, and this is important, before you settle, make sure that you have at least 5,500 prestige. Just so that you can then go on and actually just do it in one fell swoop. You know, culture convert and create the empire. Now what you want to do is settle anywhere in Poland. You conquer that, you have to do it while you're at peace. This is why I was looking over there. Um, once you're at peace and you have 5,500 prestige in every single county that you need for this, settle anywhere in Poland. It does not matter where, just settle in Poland. You can see now we are the Holy Roman Empire, technically speaking, and all the nomads are now independent. Anything was tribal or feudal or theocratic stayed with us, but all the nomads went away, so don't give them any land. Then, after you've done that, change your capital to one that is actually Polish, because when you settle, that province becomes Mongol. Settle anywhere that is actually Polish, click on your portrait, convert to the local culture, and all of a sudden you can immediately form the Slavic Union. And with that, a true Slav, Tengrikut Batu has created the Slavic Union in seven damn years. I really liked this achievement run personally, like doing it, I really enjoyed it because it's just such straightforward mechani mechanics, but it just works like an absolute charm. I hope that you're able to get this achievement now as well, and I want to thank you for tuning in.
With that being said, I want to thank the members of the channel, first of all the Barons, the Richest T, Snywolf, Sai and Hermann, and of course the wonderful Dukes, Eric, Lexo and Benedict. Thank you all so much for your support, this is what keeps this channel going in its current form. If you also appreciate what I do on YouTube and want to support me, then check out the join button right under the video to see the membership perks that you would get if you were to become a member indeed. Now you can also check out the Parallax affiliate link in the description, if you buy any game via that link, I will get a share to no extra cost to you. Thank you so much for tuning in and later, alligator.